got a fire alarm testing going nuts, driving Tucker insane. So we're playing a road game today. Confiscated my old man's office here. Uh, as you can see, we got the grainy 720p camera, but we're committed to bringing the underdog content no matter what. We got a nice little, what do we got here? We got a little Stein Canucks memorabilia. We got a, if I lean back in the old man rocking chair, we got a real cringe uh, university graduation picture of me. And uh, actually a great reminder that I got to get some of my stuff back from my folks place here because we got a signed Russell Wilson, a signed Marshawn Lynch, and a signed Robbie Cano picture still up on the wall that should be displayed uh, at my place in the backdrop of, uh, of the thing. But uh, we're, we're dedicated to bringing the content no matter what. So let me bring in Nez here. Oh, shoot. There we go. Boom. I don't know what like I love the mo what I love most about this intro is like the the backdrop behind you or like you holding up like the non mic end <laughs> of your wired headphones like you're holding up this end like <laughs> dude you're in shambles holding up the dude, wire like really I went with to... this one yeah uh -huh. like the whole intro which you can hear yourself fine okay, you don't okay. need to do any of the extra stuff but uh you're just firing on all cylinders, man. I didn't uh, know that you uh that that you that you had a a, a uni degree. Oh come on, man! I'm a sharp lad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you put all. I thought that was all for the birds. I thought you put that behind you. No, no, no. I uh I I I finished up while I was playing poker and stuff like that. But uh, I left the business side of stuff and went to. Uh, I sloughed my way through the business uh, minor instead of major. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Well done. And also, breaking news, I don't know if you're aware, O'Neill Cruz has indeed hit another home run. Dude, this guy, like, we were we were low-key, like, tongue-in-cheek joking about the discount Ellie stuff. It's, it's not even a joke. Like, this is insane now. Seventh home run in the spring, and they're all rockets, man. They're all moonshots. Like that 115 plus mile per hour exit velo. Holy. I mean, this, I, I, I'm pumped to be a, a, a pseudo pirates fan right now. Yeah. I, you know, if you've got O'Neill Cruz bags, you can't, I mean, it's spring training. These, they don't, these don't count for <laughs> shit, but you got to be a little excited. You know, it's better than playing like garbage. So that's one combo we haven't really had this year that we've had in the past is like what matters about spring, you know? Like mm -hmm. counting stats, not so much. More so like where guys are hitting in the lineups, what days they're playing, whether they're playing on the road trips or not, because that's kind of more indicative of what their position will be come spring. But it's really hard to ignore seven home runs with the majority of them being like 110 mile per hour plus. Like it's crazy. Especially coming off the injury like he mm -hmm. was, you know, pretty significant injury. And to see him actually come out and look like he's not missing a beat, that's huge. That's mm -hmm. that's big time. I don't know that we're going to get a flippening of him and Ellie, but he no. is flying up boards, though. Like, like he was a pick 80 for a while. Uh, he's pick 60 now, and he's only getting more expensive. So, you know, my bags are feeling comfy. Yo, straight up, like, remove the bias for a second. Remove the positional designation. O'Neill Cruz or Wyatt Langford this year? Who scores more underdog fantasy points? O'Neill Cruz. I think so too. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, he, they, they, they're they're probably going to hit him lead off. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Wouldn't you rather him hit behind? Wouldn't you rather hit behind Oatmeal Reynolds? And you know, he he compiles the the counting stats. Yeah. I don't know what, what is up with like teams gal braining lead off, but it's more plate appearances. So mm -hmm. we'll take it. Uh, but I think, I think it'll be him one uh, Reynolds two, And then after that, it can be, a, they, they had their starting lineup today was eerily close to what opening day would be, but uh -huh. for uh, a right hander, I'll have to see Santana. Um, Santana, Henry Davis, like that kind of stuff. Hey, Henry Davis three. will be like fifth. Santana's a, a, a Minnesota twin, but. Who did I say? I said Henry Davis, did I not? And Santana. Oh, yeah, yeah, Santana. No longer uh, there. 
Oh, yeah, we also got more breaking news. The White Sox just announced their uh, opening day starter. Ooh. Uh, the KBO All-Star himself? No, no, it's not him. Who is it? <laughs> it's Garrett Crochet. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, now I know. I mean, I just saw this one from Paid in the chat here. Like, can't get, can't wait for the baseball dailies. I was thinking about this yesterday because I was watching a bit of the Nationals game. And I was like, Josiah Gray's been named the opening day starter in Cincinnati. I was like, oh, yeah, Ellie might be just the 1-0-1 on opening day. Yeah, no, he's going to be like, he probably will be to be mm-hmm. honest, in, in, in Great American Ballpark against Josiah Gray, who, like, all he does is give up home runs. Oh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> um, all right, Nezzy, why don't we start with hoops today? We got yeah. eight contests up in the lobby. The main contest, a little bit smaller than it had been in recent memory, but they made up with it by offering seven other contests. So um, going back to, like, the smorgasbord of hoops action stuff, but things are filling really- quite fast i'm looking at the main lobby right tom by it oh did i lose you no you were breaking up a little bit but i think i think it's i think it's smooth i'm sure i'm sure it's a, it's a fine experience are we back for, uh... are we good okay yeah 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 you're back you're back Oh man, this might be a this might be a C plus show. <laughs> this is out of my control. I'm sorry, people. <laughs> so so you oh, you're, your spiel. You were talking Robot about job. how quickly oh, things okay. were filling. Oh my god, are you even able to hear me? <laughs> Dude, Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. Okay. I got you. I got you right now. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, dude. You're I'm, we got, I got like you. five seconds in between like what I say and you actually hearing what I'm saying. Oh no. Okay, I'm gonna leave and come back. All right. Just get out of here. Okay, folks. Here we go. Now n- now we can now we can do this show, right? Now we can do this show. Let's pull up the lobby. Let's see what's going on. How are you guys doing today? Should I just throw on some uh, some tunes? Just make this a full a full solo show. Here we go. Shambles. We're back. Are yeah, we good? Yeah. Oh, oh, it's so good now. So, so good. Crispy. Okay. All right. I'll get the I'll get the uh, the stuff back and and shared up. Why don't you talk uh, macro of uh, hoop slate right now? How many have you done, <laughs> etc. Uh, I've done close to 50 right now. Okay. I'm at 50 and it's a fun one, man. It's, it's really fun. There were some big time stances being taken this morning by, you know, the whales of the discord of the chat, you know, uh, I thought Delano Banton was going to be a fourth round pick, uh, by, by five o'clock today. Uh, he was going so early all the time. ETR comes out, have has him ranked past the top 36, and now he goes undrafted. So uh, pretty, pretty, pretty funny how how that mm-hmm. of course all works out. A lot of Q tags. You know, we've got the Celtics with you know all their Q tags potentially. You no know, JT really opens things up for Brown, of course, and uh, and KP in that game. We've got the injury maintenance on Cade who's a real yeah. Q and he is falling big time now in drafts. I mean, this is a, one of the best slates in my opinion that we've had in a really long time where you can really take advantage of these Q tag discounts and play in like kind of gamble on them. And even if they don't play you, you other things are going to open up that make other players really good plays. So um, I got in all my high dollar drafts already. Uh, just trying to mm-hmm. like, you know, be efficient with my time and uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're loving it. And the top four today too is loaded. So it's pretty flat at top four, but AD goes fourth <laughs> against the Hawks. Yeah. Okay. So that, 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 that's probably a really good launching point. There is if we knew AD was in a hundred percent, he'd be the one zero one today. Correct. In my opinion. Yes. Yeah. I agree with you. 
that's where I'm at with uh, the Hawks there. Uh, Hawks on a back-to-back as well. The AD injury is wasn't like a a uh, a limiting one. It was uh, he went to the hoop against uh, Trace Jackson Davis, uh, got a finger in the eye. He ended up playing the remainder of the quarter, but then it swelled up to a point where it was basically closing on him and he didn't play the remainder of the game. So we got an optimistic report this morning that he's on track to play, but we've had those in the past and blah, blah, blah. Uh, AD has played through the Q tags a good bit this this year. I think if you want to get hyper exploitative in this contest and open yourself up to having 30% AD, you take him at one for the rest of the day here before we get that news. Yeah, I'm at 47% AD. There you go. Yeah. I, like I fully I, I fully agree with doing that. I mean, obviously it's a it's a like um hyper high variance strategy, but that's exactly yeah. what I was doing this morning. Yeah, it, it's just like rare on underdog where you can get somebody that projects to be the 101 that often. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it, it you just where I'm at in my, in my process and in like, in, in, in my like DFS career, if you want to call it is like when that opportunity presents itself, I'm taking it and results be damned. Like I can be happy and live with that process because I just understand that that is a rare, that's a rare thing. I can't mm-hmm. always do that. Yeah, no, I fully agree with you there. Um, we were running down the Q tags and we didn't even talk about my favorite stance thus far. And one of our cover boys is, uh, this, this Cavs versus Pacers spot right now. Um, what is this dog doing? Oh my God. <laughs> okay, okay. He just, dude, he just stole something and went for a rip. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I know that run. You, if you need to grab him, we, I can, uh, no, 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 we're good. Okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Um, <laughs> Uh, no Donovan Mitchell, no Evan Mobley, no uh, Max Struess, and most likely no Dean Wade. This opens up a situation where uh, Karis LeVert can join the uh, starting lineup. Again, it looks like smash spot for Jared Allen and smash spot for Darius Garland. To me, the field not really seen it in the same capacity. I think LeVert gets pushed up a decent amount, but uh, Garland is not, and I think he should be kind of over that Pascal Siakam tier, that sort of stuff. Where are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, I've been running to the podium for Karis LeVert in the sixth. Uh, okay. Really love that spot for him. And I was really surprised to see other people weren't. So, I mean, we'll see how that changes like throughout the day. But Karis LeVert, you know, we see him in th- the results – when the, all the, all this opportunity opens up and Karis LeVert just like plays mad minutes, has decent to good production, and the projections also buy it, and mm-hmm. all that comes together to face Indiana, and he is still freely available in the sixth round, which like I find really interesting and surprising. Garland as well. I think Garland is in a really good spot. The one thing that I'll note, and I don't really have like – Never have data, folks, but I watch the games <laughs> and I play the games and I know how things are bearing out. The Pacers have been like kind of not as like awesome as they have been early on in the season for fantasy. And mm-hmm. that's probably noise. It's probably noise. But I'm wondering if that's sort of being taken into account here as well, where like I maybe double count the matchup against the Pacers, whereas these projection systems are kind of like, you know, pulling the reins back and thinking that the, that, um, you know, the crowd is, is at, at, at the right spot because they pretty have, they're pretty appropriately ranked as far as ADP versus projection goes with these big three of the Cavs and Garland, Allen and, uh, and Sexton uh, right now I'm way more, Levert than than those two. I'm gonna work in some Jared Allen, but for my high dollar stuff, I was going elsewhere when I was looking at Jared Allen on the board. Okay, yeah, that's fair. Where were you going elsewhere? Were you going to the Chicago stuff then? Chicago and uh, uh, Jaron Jackson against the Kings. Okay, all right, yeah, that's fair. Let's let's look at the Chicago stuff for a second, and then and then get back to the Celtics one. Um, Chicago gets uh, Portland tonight most likely like not definitively but most likely no kobe white uh doubtful tag there and then caruso has this q tag for the left toe which he's had multiple times here um first things first 
Io DeSumo, probably underpriced and should be a decent six round click. He plays big, big minutes in these situations. And like, there's basically nowhere else for those minutes to go. Um, do you like DeRozan or Vooch more? And do you think they're both underpriced in the second round right now? I think I like in a vacuum DeRozan more, but uh, I, I'm taking them equal parts and usually going Vooch first. Uh, I mm-hmm. think Vooch for the floor, DeRozan for the ceiling. And obviously we're trying to win first place uh, just because of the stock upside with DeRozan is a little bit higher than uh, than it is for, for Vooch. So um, I like them both, man, a, a okay. lot. And I'm really, and you know, I'm going to be overweight both unless things change. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, you mentioned, uh, uh, no, it's all good. Never mind. I, I was going to ask you, do you think, there's any chance Caruso sits tonight, like like Nick alludes in the chat here that Caruso's been balling. Mm-hmm. Is there any chance Caruso sits tonight and then they play big because Aiton's been balling on the other side of this one and we see that double big Drummond lineup with Vooch where basically that discounts Vooch's rebounding upside and kind of brings Drummond as a smash six rounder into play? Yeah, I hope not. Uh, okay. they haven't done it lately, so no. Um, I, I would assume probably not tonight, but okay. uh, I'm 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 hoping not. <laughs> okay, no, I, I yeah, I was just kind of like galbraining my way through that one earlier. I didn't bring up Bulls' schedule recently because I know that they had like a couple games where they basically just wouldn't do that. Like they wouldn't do that against the Kings. They wouldn't do that against the Clippers. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else was involved in some of those games. Anyways. Yeah. 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 Just they, they just opting to go small, which, you know, maybe, maybe mm-hmm. free drum it a little bit, you know, but not, not tonight, not, not on the okay. bulls. He needs to go somewhere where he can actually play basketball. Uh, Caruso is a really good six round pick. Cause obviously, you know, like we're alluding to, he's been playing well. Kobe white mm-hmm. is doubtful. He participated in shoot around, but he is listed as doubtful. I believe still doubtful right on this. Yeah. Year. The, I read a nugget from one of the beat reporters about participating in shoot around that he actually didn't do very much. Okay. Like he got like the, the check like participated, but like he, he didn't participate as if he was going through like game day routine kind of thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So Caruso is a really good six round pick because if he plays, he projects well. And if he doesn't, Mm -hmm. you get a swap and you can more often than not swap to IO because he's, not really getting drafted and uh, a yeah. really good spot against the Blazers. I was going to play a ton of minutes with or without Caruso, to be honest. So uh, not, not a bad, uh, not a bad option there, but Caruso is just like made a glass man. Uh, so we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Poor Caruso. Yeah. I'm looking back at bulls while you were talking there. They, they basically had, they had the Kings, they had Utah who's like low key depleted right now and not very big without uh, marketing and whatever. Then they had Golden State. You never play big against LA. You basically don't play big against uh, Clippers. That is, and they had them twice in there. And then Indiana, you don't have to play big against Dallas. You don't have to play big against. Uh, I don't know this. This one kind of jumped out to me as like the first time in a long time that they could go back to that double big. But it's pretty galbrain, and I think you're just better off taking Caruso in the last round. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. But uh, yeah, I mean. Kamara, Aiton, and uh, Banton, those are, it's a lot of height. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, especially with Banton running the point, right? Um, okay. I, I had AD at one, like you see here, when we got the bullish news about them being optimistic about him playing today. I moved up Brunson over this next tier here. It <laughs> feels like a rest spot for Tatum for me. Uh, are you in lockstep there? They played yesterday. He only played 28 minutes yesterday, I believe. Uh, not even 26. Mm-hmm. So th- there's a bull case. But Brown and White and Zinger sat yesterday, and we got yeah. the White is in, and we got the Zinger probable tag as of right now. Um, do you like the spot? Do you like getting to Tatum? Do you like getting to the other pieces? What, where's your lean right now? I'm light on Tatum right now, uh, but God damn, man. They, I, I can just like picture it, like the, the notification, like Jason Tatum available to play. It is, I feel like anytime Jason Tatum gets a Q tag, he plays, but it would make a ton of sense. Those guys just rested. Tatum just played. Rest Tatum. 
it's the Pistons play these other folks, but mm-hmm. God, man, we'll, we'll, we'll see. Uh, it's a dangerous fade. Cause he, you know, projects really well, but I am fading it. And I'm with you, man. I've got Brunson five. Okay. Love, love the spot yeah. Brunson tonight. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah. Ball handling versus, versus, uh, versus um, the Warriors, right? Yeah. And, and he, yeah. I mean, he's been balling mm-hmm. Brunson that is. Yeah, and then uh, we're most likely, uh, or we already know, we're not going to have OG tonight. So OG was back. Not that he soaks like a ton of usage and stuff like that, but that makes it more viable for me to get to like Hartenstein in the sixth and Hart in the fifth. Like I, I kind of, I don't have a huge stand. I've only done twenty drafts thus far, but I was taking Hart like, and I'm not usually the guy who takes Hart, but just with no OG, I was kind of like getting excited to take Hart there i know i saw you do it in one of our drafts and i was like oh my god this this dude's scrolling but it's not it's not it's not a bad play like once you there's like i have a really really solid top 35 34 Mm -hmm. and a half and then that last 30 that last pick is like really up in the air you know you can really do a lot at that pick assuming that like lever you know assuming that my top 34 and a half is gone um yeah, I, I think the, the biggest thing for me, based on like what you just said about the Knicks, is like Josh Hart could could do it again. You know, like he could do it again. Like he's you know, this is like his I want to be on the right side of history for the first time ever, Nez. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he he's challenging, but like he's gonna he's gonna play like the entire game. Gonna do his he's like Draymond on crack, you know, like when it comes to like his stats and what he can do, like he's just, yeah, he's a mo- he's a monster out there, man. He's he's, he's annoying, but I mean, <laughs> he projects well. Like he projects a little bit better than his ADP suggests, which is okay. like so annoying. Super duper third eye wide open right now. Oh, this is this is the least <laughs> least Galbrain John take ever about to be launched. It is. It's March Madness season. We got the Nova boys together. We got revenge game for Dante. What do we think? DiVincenzo night tonight without OG. Revenge game. Nova March Madness magic. Sign me up. (laughs) Not bad, right? Sign me up. I haven't seen him go a ton in the sixth tonight. Who's that? DiVincenzo. Oh, DiVincenzo. A ton in the sixth. Yeah, 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 he's he's always overlooked, and I've got him. Like, yeah, he's 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 draftable in the sixth. Okay. Yeah, I think he, I think he should be in our player pool tonight. Uh, let's talk through some of this middle of the second round here because I I think there's kind of like a clear line in the sand at Braun tonight. It's kind of like there's a top four, and I think most of like the quote unquote sharp community is anticipating AD plays, and they like the spot and they've moved him to, like, one or two. Flowchart obviously loves um, both Sabonis and Edwards tonight, although that Sabonis matchup, a little less enticing with Desmond Bain and JJJ back tonight. But, like, I think there's kind of a line line in the sand with the Brunson, and then I, I guess if Tatum was definitively in, you would push him up to, like, five or six. And then this next kind of, like, tier, I don't really know what to do with, man, because never Hallie... Uh, never bam the, the, what what are we doing with this next like big grouping here yeah man this is this is tough like i'm 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 not drafting a lot of hallie you know this isn't mm-hmm. a really good this isn't a great spot for hallie and he's burnt me the last like few spots so mm-hmm. we haven't had a hallie ceiling game in a minute and i don't know that we're going to get one against the Cavs. i mean knowing that i just said that it, it will happen <laughs> But um, yeah, no, no, uh, no Hallie for me, but uh, really like, you know, I like Fox. I'm taking Fox a good bit. Uh, I actually think that, and this might be crazy. Mm -hmm. I think that Bane and JJJ back is actually good for the Kings. Okay. Why? Just because more pace up, more scoring, more back and forth. Yeah. They're just like more efficient. You know, they're just Mm -hmm. a better run team than they kind of put help push them on on the other end. So I'm actually like enjoying the fact that Bain and, uh, and JJJ are expected to be back in this lineup against this Kings. This should be a fun, a fun spot. Uh, I think Maxi is a little, uh, let me, let me just double check this before I say this. Yeah. We got the Tobias Q tag right now. 
if that's what you're checking. Yeah, the Tobias Q tag and also Maxi is being, you know, kind of pushed <laughs> down a little bit by projections, by the projection bros. And I don't know that I am like in lockstep with that. I like I like Maxi tonight. I know th- that Miami isn't like a great spot, but he's he's really kind of all they got offensively, him and Ubre. So I, I like Maxi. It's tough between him and him and Bam for me. Um, but mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna probably lean into at the field on Maxi if everybody else is, you know, kind of pushing him down. Okay. Yeah, Bam's gonna get the the Mo Bamba and Paul Reed treatment. It feels like it should be a pretty good Bam spot tonight, uh, especially if Jimmy doesn't go. Do you think Jimmy goes tonight? Have you been taking Jimmy? at all have you been pushing up bam in anticipation that they do the kind of like facilitate and point bam through like run the offense through bam situation have been taking bam okay i like the spot for bam against the sixers i don't think that they can really do much to defend him but we'll see man i i have never gotten bam right like once so (laughs) we'll see and jimmy is uh jimmy is like one of the best picks on the board today in the fifth oh interesting okay so you've been doing the jimmy in the fifth instead of doing like rosier in the in the last or something like that every single time yeah if i can if i have jimmy in the in the fifth i'll do that i don't really pair shout out to brad he kind of put me on um on game that bam and jimmy don't spike together frequently so Mm -hmm. i'm not trying to pair those two together uh but jimmy in the fifth otherwise is 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 money you know what's interesting is uh, okay, there's two there's two there that I want to talk about. The maxi ceiling actually positively correlates with the Embiid ceiling, and Nick was alluding in the chat that we haven't seen a maxi ceiling since January. He left the ceiling in January, and it's very interesting that like maxi's fantasy points per game with Embiid are actually like significantly better than without because traditionally speaking, you would think that like higher usage would translate to higher fantasy points. I found that one very interesting, and then the same thing you alluded to there. The handling role of Terry plays better with Bam than Jimmy plays with Bam. So, like, if you're looking for positive correlation, Terry plus Bam makes more sense than Bam plus Jimmy. Interesting. Yeah, those were two that I was just looking at earlier this morning that I found like, oh, okay, and it kind of, I mean, it kind of checks out, right? Yeah, no, I, I think that that actually makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, whom else have we missed on here? Uh, we haven't really talked about the Kings spot. Um, any love for some six round, uh, scroll the F down Kings guys like Malik Monk or, uh, Keegan Murray. Is it a, is it a, a shooter night for, for Murray or is he going to get the defensive assignment? What do you think? I think Murray's on, Murray's on Bane duty and, uh, and Bane just played 31 minutes in his first game back. So I'm expecting big things from Desmond Bane tonight. Uh, Monk is in my player pool, though, so we'll, okay. we'll do a little Monk in the in the sixth, a little Monkin. Okay, yeah, I like it. Um, this kind of like muddled middle range. Do, do you think Rudy goes tonight? Revenge game, Utah. The everybody knows about the Kessler trade. Blah blah blah. You think you think he goes tonight? He participated in a shoot around. I think tonight's the night that he plays. He's been sitting for for quite a while. Um, I would expect him to go tonight. He's a, okay. he's a great, he's a really good pick too. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just kind of like scrolling ADP and stuff like this. Um, Derek white getting overweight in the sixth round and anticipating either Tatum or Brown sitting. Is that something you've been doing? Uh, yes. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely into Derek white tonight. Big time. Um, I mean, we need Tatum to sit for these guys to like really, really smash. But White is a pretty good pick regardless. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you there. That was one that was like one of my favorite like uh, late clicks. Uh, Laurie Markkinen, do you think he goes tonight? Do you care if he goes tonight? <laughs> I mean, I will take him in the sixth sometimes. Uh-huh. Um, kind of care if he goes, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it... it uh... I, I don't know, man. I find I find it hard to believe that he's going to be the guy you need, but it, it, I feel like I'm obligated to take him at pick 36 if he's there. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, and Brad bringing up something here too that like the minutes would be totally up in the air there. Exactly, it feels like he's been out forever, but like he he's played in I I I think he's played five games ago, six games ago, something like that. But it's obviously a brutal spot, especially if Rudy goes. Yeah, so that's a tough one, man. I'm I'm not getting overweight that I can confidently say that, but um, mm-hmm. not totally fading when he projects like thirty first overall, right. Yeah, fair enough. Um, pitch bringing up a uh, a good thing here that like Nas goes every draft, right? So you kind of got to do like a little bit of planting your flag on the Rudy thing because you're not going to get the easy swap. I mean, you could do for like Nah, but like I mean, I don't really want any Alexander Walker to be honest. On no, I, I, slate, I'm like, just going to you know. hope that other things open up if uh, if Rudy is out and hope that other some other guys sit that open up value. Um, yeah. Dude, the Nas, the Nas redrafters, man, insane. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like the Derek White thesis, though, in some regard. You know what I mean? Where it's like, if you take him in the fifth or sixth round right now and you get Rudy to sit or you get Tatum and Brown to sit, you gain like two rounds of closing value. But if those guys play, it's effectively a dead roster spot. I wonder, like where Nas goes if 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 Rudy sits like how much more can can Nas Reed go like it's not going to be okay let's um I don't think it's going to be that crazy Miles and, and Derek White's going to start a point guard regardless yeah it's fair it's fair um Miles Turner or Nas Reed if and if Rudy's out yeah, if Rudy's out. Let's play the if Nas Rudy's Reed. out game. Okay, uh, Simons or Reed? Probably Reed. I mean, okay. that's that, that's really close. Okay, Zinger or Reed? Zinger. Kate or Reed? If Cade plays Cade. Okay, so we'd be ranking him like 24th. Josh Hart. Yeah, or it's Reed? about a round. It's about a round. Um, I think I still like Josh Hart tonight. That that that's probably like the the decision point. Probably Reed. So okay. all right, he gets about a round, which like, cool man. Like you got a round, you know. Like I don't know. Right. Like that's not like that's not moving the needle for me. Like I'll wait on that. I okay. Guess. I don't now know. Now let's okay. Let's play it the other way then. Tatum sits. Brown sits. Where do you take Derek White? Josh Harder, Derek White, then. Josh Harder, Derek White, if Tatum sits. And Brown sits. And Brown sits? Yeah. T- Derek White. So Derek White would be like the, the bigger a bigger mover than Nas Reed would be if we get no go bear and if we get no Brown and or Tatum. Yeah, I think so. I didn't even consider the fact that like Tatum and Brown could sit just because like, I feel like one of them will play. Yeah. I feel like Brown's more likely to play because he didn't play yesterday, but that's just purely narrative and anecdotal. Yeah. I mean, it is the Pistons, but I don't think the Pistons are like, I mean, they're bad, mm-hmm. but they're really not. I mean, they're really bad, but I, I, sw- I swear I can, I can squint and see some redeeming qualities of, of the Pistons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Um, let's have the D'Angelo Russell conversation right now, because if for some reason AD or Braun sit, which I don't think is going to happen, um, he would kind of be the skyrocketer, but now he's kind of in this like no man's land at 27 where I take Butler and Lavert over him every time. Am I going to be caught with my pants down? God, man. <laughs> D'Lo, I mean, I don't want to be <laughs> empty-handed with D'Lo, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take him. I mean, it's a really good spot. It's yeah. The Hawks, you know, really, really enough said there. So I'm gonna have a little bit of D'Lo, but it's definitely like way more appealing if one of AD or Braun sits. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some D'Lo. He is like ranked 33 for me right now. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'm going to be light, but I don't want to be like way underweight. Cause he could, 
it could be D'Lo night against the Hawks, you know? Yeah, I, I think I got to start mixing him in a little bit more and moving him up just for that, like, catch and shoot potential there. Um, most mispriced player on the board right now is who for you, Nez? Most mispriced player. Well, let's, like, look at some results here. Try to actually. I'll give you one. Yeah, I've got, I've got a few. Who, who's yours? Jalen Johnson. You like Jalen Johnson that much? No, I think he's the most mispriced player on the board. Oh, in a bad in way. In terms of in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, absolutely smashes last night um, mm -hmm. on the only game in town. And it's, you know, thanks to the help of five stocks. Shout out Crutches, who who won last night, thanks to oh, yeah. the Jalen Johnson big, performance. Yeah, big shout out to uh, Bound33 and Crutches last night. The, the yeah. Two, two ones. Yeah, big shout yeah, out. Yeah, I was not on the Jalen Johnson play there. That no. was not something that I was doing a lot. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm not going to have a lot of Jalen Johnson again, probably. But he does play the Lakers, and the Lakers are, in my opinion, a good matchup for somebody like Jalen Johnson. As of mm. right now, man, I'm at like, God. I thought the I opposite. Like, I have like one share of Jalen Johnson. Okay. Yeah, I thought they were a bad matchup for him because they have so, so much size. And the games in which you want more Jalen Johnson is when he runs backup unit five. Yeah, I just think of like the Lakers being decent fantasy spots. I'm not sure. Maybe that's the no, wrong way I, to yeah. think about it. No, I'm not going to question you on that one for sure. I mean, yeah, I just for, – for, for my money, I was like, oh, it's a bad spot for him. But mm -hmm. interesting to hear the hear the other side. Um, Okay, any other names you wanted to bring up, Ness? Uh, no, we, we kind of touched on, like, all my favorite plays, man. Right now I'm just, like, overwhelmingly in on AD, Lavert, mm -hmm. Vooch, Bain, DeRozan, Brunson, Przingis – like okay. I'm yeah chat's uh chat's clamoring for zinger right now as the most uh mispriced on the slate right now yeah if no if there's no tatum yeah zinger is gonna be uh gonna be a big time riser uh, yeah and we'll we already got to get in on that we already got the no al horford and etc yeah yeah so he's he's definitely playing okay what do you think about uh, uh, Jalen Dern on the other side of that game? Mm. Mm -mm. No Barbara Walters tonight? Who? The 2020. No Barbara Walters. Barbara Walters? <laughs> <laughs> where, where did you hear that? <laughs> I think it was... Uh, um, I think it was Winky who put it in his write-up uh, um, one of the nights. God, the Barbara Walters. That's funny. I, I thought it was uh, very good. <laughs> uh, mm. We got no – We okay, so we got – let me sell you this pen. We got Noah Sear Thompson tonight, and then we got Simone Fontecchio, who has been logging a lot. Uh, he's He's got a Q tag right now, and Cade's got the injury management – Q tag, which is going to be, I think, evergreen for the remainder of the season there because they keep going back to that left knee injury maintenance. Uh, he played through it last time, but they're, they're going to find some rest spots for Kate at some point. This, this, whatever. Anyways, no, yeah, I think I'm good on Duran, to be honest. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Sorry. I didn't mean to cough into that. I don't know, my, <laughs> my mute button. <laughs> Command D. Is that, is that what you're, you got a shorthand? Uh, I yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I want to move uh, my desk down, but my dog is sleeping so comfortably, and he he's gonna jump like he's dreaming right now. Oh, I can't <laughs> I can't wake him. I can't wake him. Um, I envy him. Big snack saying he got second in the buzzer beater last night. Love to see that. Also, our our guy Noah took down the buzzer beater on the weekend. There, tagged us on Twitter there and then uh bouncing that he had 25 lineups last night so just a classic um classic uh you don't need to 150 max to participate in these contests and it was the only one he had with jj so wow. it was his only jalen johnson lineup so you know you can get there um 
Yeah, this is a fair point from Nick. When the Pistons are down 40 in the third, I don't think we're going to Yeah, even even with half the Celtics, it wouldn't yeah. even matter. Yeah, that's a very fair point. Uh okay, let's let's jump in uh let's jump in one here. Should we just jump in the main contest now? Yeah. Let's hit it. Okay. This thing is feeling stupid fast. Yeah, um both you and I noted oh, what's going on here? Did you click yes? Yeah, I clicked yes like four times. Oh boy, Let you might have do... you might have you might have found a, a cheat code. That's how you can mass enter now. <laughs> Just hit yes really <laughs> as many times as possible before the times loads. over and over again. Uh... Yeah, I, I think um I think we're gonna get a second contest. I mean this is uh this is like one of the smallest Monday contests we've had in a while and little unfortunate because this is like one of the funnest slates that we've had in a long time too. Uh, so I, you know, I think if we just keep doing our part, we can, uh, uh Oh, we can see this thing uh, get filled and maybe get some, uh, get some more contests out. You having trouble. Uh, All right. Nice. Yeah. I think it's like struggling with my location or something like that. Okay. Yep. Let me go. How ahead. do you do the, how do you do I mean, the, allow location on Google on Chrome. Come on, John. <laughs> Explain to me like out of five. Let, let me just, let, let me just share my damn screen. Oh, I want to get drafts in. Dra draft with me on, on your cell phone. This is, <laughs> or draft, draft, enter the draft on your phone and then hit your active tab. Do that. Oh, okay. 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 I'll all right. We do have a we do have an after dark. Uh, that's true. I just saw the layup line. Is the uh, the main one up? Not all right. I'm in. All right. There. That's what we needed right there. My man. Easy peasy. A little work around there. Detect this. Can't detect my location. Try me now. Oh god, we just the pirates just got a kiss, got the kiss of death, dude. This sucks. Do you know Ryan Spader? Holy. Oh my god, dude. You're this is <laughs> John, this is a disaster. <laughs> Dude, we're good. We're good. We're good. Are, are we? <laughs> are we good? Are we good? I think we're good. Holy right. shit. What a clusterfuck today has been. Do you know Ryan Spader? Are you familiar with his game? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah, he, he kissed to death. He just said the pirates are going to be a problem. Oh, no. It's not I'm good. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to our exposures. That's not the that's not that's not the endorsement that you want. <laughs> yeah, I'll let Nez draft the the dinger or something like that. They're calling that. you a boomer professor on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, uh, you just filled the main with with all those pump fakes. Yeah, single handedly filling the main with everybody trying to jump in. Apologies. You're welcome. Right. We're just we're just ultimate shills. Sorry, guys. Hey, just be thankful that I went to such great lengths as to venture across town to set up a stream elsewhere to make sure that the content was, was here today. How can we ever repay you? Uh, all right. <laughs> LeBron won 82. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, th this is a pretty easy decision at least. Yeah. I think this is that line in the sand that we were talking about. Is it not? Yeah. Top four is uh, solidified. It's just a matter of what order you want to do it in. Uh, I'm going to keep taking AD until I definitively know AD is the 101, and then I will uh, continue to take him when I can. <laughs> it's not going to, it's not going to change much for me. Uh, Sabonis has been balling, but like I said, man, this is a rare opportunity to mm. have a shit ton of Anthony Davis versus the Hawks. I mean, if I could tell myself this in a vacuum at any point in time, yeah, I would I would take the run good on AD. 
I was yeah. I, I ran real hot on AD last time he played when he got hurt with the corneal abrasion. Had like twenty five percent AD. God. Yuck. Always happens, eh? Yuck. But I was uh, I, I was missing some other pieces, so that wasn't like the the whole reason why I didn't make money on that slate. But you know, you really do hate to see it. <laughs> uh, Tatum goes at eight there. Uh, as you can see, I had Allen pushed up. Um, I, I don't know. Probably Bam's a better click here. Uh, do you like Maxi, Bam, Allen, DeRozan? What do you like? Maybe Bam. Okay. Yeah, just thinking thinking through it a little bit more. Uh, just ride the hot streak with Bam. You know, we we've liked him. He's showing us that he's that he's doing it lately. Mm-hmm. Um, I just can't get this dude right. <laughs> so yeah. hopefully, I you know maybe if I just like always draft him once in a while, I'll get him right. Yeah, likewise, I never get Bam right, but it does feel it does feel like a good spot for Bam tonight. Yeah, it does. Uh, last last night was such a fun slate. Uh, it was it was just so shitty, like with all like the injuries and stuff that went down. But it was kind of a lot of fun to draft. Like I I found out who Justin Champ uh, Champagne uh, was <laughs> last night. Yeah. He was in my player pool like firmly, which is hilarious. Um, but the night before, or maybe it was two nights ago, Cam Thomas played the Pacers. And I had like 35% Cam Thomas. And I, mm-hmm. and I was really excited about that stance. I thought that was going to be uh, some leverage. And he flopped. He had two fouls in the first like two minutes. He flopped. And that was like in the back of my head when I was drafting that Cam Thomas versus the Spurs. Uh, yeah. And like if I hadn't had just gotten burnt, <laughs> I would have been all in on Cam Thomas again because I love drafting against the Spurs. But yeah. I was a little bit light. And I'm like I said, like I'm not trying to pin – all of my, you know, despair on like that one play, but that was really frustrating just for myself personally. Like I'm not mad at Cam Thomas. It's not Cam Thomas's fault. It's my fault. That yeah. was a fantastic spot. Why not just play Cam Thomas again? Like who right. cares? That I do yeah, that too much. Yeah, we love the recency, people. The recency bias seep in there. Um Allen and Hallie come back to us. Who do you prefer tonight? Allen. But wow. I mean, if you want to take Hallie, you can, but Let's like, take Hallie. all right, never I mean, Hallie, never, never Hallie on stream. I'm going to, so I have my dry erase board <laughs> over here. Uh, the one that I wrote our lions one pride on that. I still haven't erased. It's probably like stuck <laughs> on there now. I need to yeah. make like a list of the nevers and it's, you know, never Hallie, um, never this Dodgers. Is a, this is a big never slate. Nez. Because we got never Hallie and never DeRozan, and they're both going in the second round today. Yeah, and I kind of said never ever Bam, and then Bam smashed That's... like no one's business. So I, I want to erase Bam off that. We got to start tallying these things, like starting now. Like I said, I'm going to get that board clean. And if we have a new addition to the board, I'll just write it in real time. And then that way we can know who we're, uh, who we're never playing. Um, yeah, never, never, never Dodgers is going to be tough this season. <laughs> oh, it's going to be impossible. We're going to want one Dodger in every single lineup every single night. It's just they're too I, That loaded. probably makes it even more better, like more profitable. I don't more know. viable for sure. Absolutely. All right. This is a good uh, range of the board here to discuss. We'll see who Ray's it takes. He takes heart. Interesting. Whoa. So, so we got that. I mean, people are in, man, with no OG. People are in on the 44 minutes from heart tonight. Um, Pascal? Jalen Johnson, Garland, who do you like? Bain? I think Hanger. Garland or Bain. Okay. Let's do Garland. A little bit of game correlation there with Hallie. If you're going to force me to take Hallie, let's at least take the guard on the other side who's going to cook his ass. And by me forcing you, you mean the the room, of course. You would never yeah. say yeah. such a blasphemous thing like I would force you to take my my mortal enemy. And Tyrese Halliburton. <laughs> God, he has no idea what he's the strain that he's put on me. Yeah, he is he is unaware of, of, of what he has cost us, both <sighs> mentally. If you guys want to stand up with me while you watch the stream and stretch with me, that's totally allowed. I've got some <laughs> lower back tightness that is just beating my ass. This is um this is a super fun room right now. Like Steph falls in certain rooms. He didn't in this one. 
Rudy's pushed up after going through shoot around. Both the Chicago guys pushed up. Allie falling in like a, a, a quote unquote sharp room here. Josh Hart being pushed up. This is a this is a fun one. Yeah, I think you definitely. Yeah, you you, you, you had to take Allie, but God, mm-hmm. it, it it's it, it never feels good. It never feels yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, Hallie at 16 is insane. So it's kind of like, yeah. Yeah, Brown went at 12. There's another one. Holy shit. But, like, shit. If, you, if you don't think Tatum's going tonight, that will be Brown's ADP, will it not? Yeah, probably. Okay. Levert with Garland feels slightly negative in terms of ceiling outcome. Mm-hmm. Um, pushing up white feels good. Taking the Cade discount feels okay, but we can get it to fall more. Who do you like? I think Cade, just because okay, you, you can get a swap if he doesn't play. Um, he'll help keep it close if he does play. Um, Should we be getting ahead of who we think uh, is going to benefit from no Cade? Like, is it is it Jaden Ivy night again? Uh, I'm going to wait for the news, but I think that he's he's like. That's what's nice is you can fall back and swap to to Ivy if if mm-hmm. Cade doesn't go. Um, mm-hmm. It's it's never a fun spot against Boston, but I've been saying we're gonna get a we're gonna get an Ivy boom spot one of these one of these slates. And what better spot than without Thompson, without Fontacchio, without Cade? Like the, all the handling has to funnel to someone, does it not? Like Sasser is Sasser in play all of a sudden? 32 minutes from from Sasser and he he somehow gets hot from three. Yeah, I mean yeah. He plays. Um we could do the Terry thing here. We could do the Miles Turner correlation. We could do the Caruso and get a swap, although we already have Cade. Um DiVincenzo, revenge game. What do you like, Nez? Probably Caruso. Okay. You like Caruso over Miles Turner and Nas Reed tonight? Uh as of right now, yeah. I I have yeah. trouble getting to to Miles Turner on like any given slate. Um Okay. I know he's going to project top 36 like every time that he's out there. Um I'm not going to be overweight that by any means. Okay. I'm fine with it. What about the Terry with Bam there correlation? You're not about that one. I mean, I, I could I could get behind it, but okay. I, I really like this spot for the Bulls against the Blazers. Really, is what it kind of boils down to for me, especially with okay. no Kobe. Um. Yeah, Nick just saying he'll just take K to swap to Ivy. That's pretty clean. But in terms of like clean swaps tonight, like you're not going to get clean swaps for Gobert. You're not going to get clean swaps for. Uh, any of the Celtics guys because basically they all go every draft. So, and you're not going to get Nas Reed. So, well, yeah, I mean, in terms of clean swaps, taking Cade is probably the best. And the only other one would be like Butler to Duncan Robinson, but like I'm not sure I really want that. I think your best case scenario for like some, if you are like somebody that is banking on a lot of swaps. You mm-hmm. want like Tatum and Brown to sit, and then that kind of opens up like Pritchard and Cornette low key, uh, okay. you know, or high key because Celtics are going to be running. If, if Tatum and Brown sit, yep, it'll be like Porzingis, White, Pritchard, Cornette, and probably Brissett. Yeah, because um, Hauser and Holiday are already ruled out. Just I just contextually, yeah, yeah, and then like Xavier Tillman will get some run. Mm-hmm. V, we'll, we'll get some Jaden Spring. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, Pritchard and uh, and Cornette become at, like big time, big time swap uh, targets if if Tatum and Brown sit. But like like we said, the range of outcomes are truly like endless, or not endless, mm-hmm. but truly even and random in my opinion for this game. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, uh, th- yeah. This is the one, Banton will probably be like the swap for people, no? Like just in general, like now, just trying to yeah, trying to you, buy 39 minutes. If you're not minutes. drafting this morning, yeah, but if you're mm-hmm. drafting now, yeah, Banton goes undrafted. 
Yeah. It's interesting because like, I kind of thought Scoot would start starting again, but it seems they're not doing that. They've been playing Scoot off the bench. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're being um, careful with his minutes. Sorry. One second. I got to let my uh, dog degree his, degree his mom. Okay. Let's, um, let's jump in the dinger. I want to talk about some things. Um, spring training adjacent and dinger related in terms of our exposures. I floated an idea to Nez the other day that we would do a, my guys draft and a not my guys draft uh, because I have to register on um, mobile. This is your warning. I will not dupe you guys. I am joining the dinger right now. There's three more spots, three more spots in the dinger. There you go. Good job. There we go. Dinger's filling so fast now that the perfect game is filled too. Like this is a, uh, I got some work to do. Uh oh, where to go? There we there go. Yeah, I, I'm at like 50 now, and then plus all the slows. Whew. What are you gonna? What are you shooting for? Like 75? I mean, I was shooting for max, but. Now it's going to be 75. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It, I mean, you can do the four hour slows and just crank them out, but <laughs> it's tough. Yeah, it, it's hard, man. It's hard on the West Coast, the slows clock. Like, hey, shout out to Brad. He's in the chat right now. Brad, like, DM'd me and he's like, yo, this feels bad to do to you on the West Coast with a four hour clock, like, to pick first thing in the morning and he's like i knew you wouldn't be awake by like eight or whatever on a saturday morning so he milked the clock for like an hour dm'd me and then i woke up and i had an hour to pick so shout out brad for just being a freaking good guy on the platform but wow. um yeah the, the west coast uh the west coast clock is is a little tough for the slows right now yeah they had to like adjust the the timer i think that they had a little bit of a timing issue with the the late night clocks but it's been fixed now thankfully where it wasn't going to like 11 hours at mm -hmm. night i mean i know it changes as you get closer um it was like only seven hours so i was like really losing <laughs> like trying to not miss miss picks on like perfect games and stuff um but now but now it's been fixed yeah like brad saying thank god yeah, I didn't even realize, to be honest. I just saw it shift to four, and then I didn't realize that it even needed to be fixed. So, mm -hmm. that's yeah, but, yeah, we're yeah, now it's we're, nine. We're over, yeah, now it's nine. Never mind. The Open Mind Podcast. What's up, buddy? Yeah, open Mind. Yeah, that's want, us. That's <laughs> us, baby. You want to open your mind? Get some third yeah. eye plays, man. You're you're in the right <laughs> spot. That's true. Hey, real quick, uh, John, before before we go on, just want to say 93 of us watching baseball, that's just such a great sign for mm. the sport and for the game. And if you like us, hit, hit show us. Show us you like it. Hit the like button and uh and show show your love for for the badge bros and hit the like button. I just wanted to give that give that call to action. Thumbs for the people up, baby. Yeah, the people, the people, uh people need to be told sometimes, Nez. You're correct on this one. It helps. Oh. Tucker, do you see that? Mr. Good Boy going pick yeah, seven. Yeah. Mr. Good Boy's – oh, never mind. Yeah, he's eating Grandpa's slipper. That's what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> I just looked over. I was like, he's been pretty quiet. <laughs> yeah, because he found a good shoe. <laughs> um. All right, we're going to have our choice Whoa. of an outfielder here, Nez. Uh, either Car Carol or Jordan. I saw something in the chat. Jordan yeah. left the game early. What's going on here? Uh, I, I got to look it up. Uh, okay. I, Can you I look know, it up man. in one second? Because we're about to be on the clock. Yeah, oh, it doesn't gonna... affect us. We got Carol if we want it at 10. Uh, I think we do. Okay. It was a cramp. Okay. All right. I mean, and he also fouled a ball off his foot the other day. So, like, it's been like two bad things, you know, quote unquote bad things for the the casuals. But yeah, you shouldn't be scared of drafting Gordon Alvarez, in my opinion. Okay. All right. Yeah, I was kind of concerned about my bags there for a minute when everybody was telling me uh, he left and, and stuff. A guy I was trying to take a little bit of a stand on thus far this year. 
Um, let's talk about some other uh, spring notes. Actually, you know what, Ness? Before we go spring notes, spring whatever, let's talk about – I want to do the not our guys draft and the our guys draft, but I want to talk about uh, some of your guys. I think everybody's kind of – they know that it's Naylor right now as one of your highest owned. Who, who are kind of like your top five or top three at each position? And then I'll share mine because I feel like it's a good time to do so. Um, oh, let's make the pick first. Who do you like here, Nez? You can make this pick on my behalf. Oh, boy. Um, I don't do a lot of uh, Kyle Schwarber, but I think Schwarber and Carroll is going to be pretty uh, hard to to get. So I think, okay. I think you just play the uniqueness and take a guy that, you know, scored 15 15- – hundred fantasy points last season, which like I, uh, pe- people forget. I forget sometimes that Schwarber mm-hmm. was that good. Cause I don't take a lot of Kyle Schwarber, uh, some of my guys right now. So as like drafts have progressed, I've switched up a lot of targets and pitching has been something that I am like strongly condensed on right now. Okay. And uh, one of those guys is Kyle Harrison taking a lot of Kyle Harrison. I mean, I've been saying his name a good bit when we draft together, but uh, that has not changed for me like at all. And mm-hmm. uh, continuing to, to take him more uh, Christopher Sanchez lefty from the Phillies taking a lot of Christopher Sanchez um, in my rotation, uh, of course, Jack Flaherty. And uh, I've added, I've recently added a new pitcher to the player pool in the 20th and AJ puck. Okay. Yeah, he's getting rave reviews. I mean, he was a big prospect, uh, like kind of like comparable to the Lazardo level there. Very similar profiles, to be honest. Like kind of like uh Snell or not not Snell, more sale esque kind of thing, like back foot slider, lanky, you know, whippy with the arm action, that sort right. of thing. Um, but yeah, coming up with the A's, like he was a big he was a big deal, and then they moved him to like a closing rule later he had some arm trouble at some point there but yeah i mean man marlins just do wonders with pitching do they not they do and they're also like insanely depleted like yuri perez you know is getting imaging on the elbow looks really really bad Mm -hmm. there uh i wouldn't i would not draft him yeah that one that one stung because i had been pushing him up into that uh grayson bobby miller that tier I'd been, you know, taking a lot of him as like my second, like my SP two or something. Yeah, that's, that's tough because he was going to be so fun and he's, and he will be really good um, at one point, but it's just not, doesn't seem like that's going to be this season, which is a big bummer. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we need, we need talent. And I mean, these pitching injuries just keep mounting up and it's, it's, it's really, really, it's, it sucks and it's scary. And yeah. I mean, consider it an endorsement of seven to eight pitchers on a team. You know, I mean, just because these these dudes just get hurt so frequently, and sometimes yeah. it can be for the season. Consider the 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 running back comp that we made. We we talked about it all off season with our very first bullpen draft. Where it's like, yeah, the meta is going to be zero pitcher because the 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 flexibility in ADP and the closing line value you can get is always going to come at the pitcher position or with skyrocketing rookies. It's it's like as much as we take a step back and be like this is a different sport than football. The way in which you play best ball is is pretty similar. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is, yeah. It's a it's a really good point. Um, I'll read some of my guys after we make this pick here. Um, anyone jumping out to you? I would probably be okay doing Nolan Jones here and getting a third. I don't normally go this outfield heavy, but if we get Nolan Jones, I think I would do it. Uh, It's a pretty strong pairing if we do. Otherwise, I mean, we got, you know, Albies, Lindor, and Gunner would be my preferences from the infield. Albies, Lindor. I I don't do a ton of Lindor. I've been taking Ellie over Lindor and like Mm -hmm. been like the Ellie honk. Um, to be honest, I do a lot of these three outfield starts where Nolan Jones is my third outfielder. Really? Yeah. I like it. This is kind of like my most common start. And then I I fall back, I fall back on like that, um, sixth round tier of pitcher and kind of like double tap in there. I, I have a lot of teams, Nez, that are, um, 
two, two, three through nine rounds, and the two pitchers come in the seven, eight, or six, seven. Same. Yep. Yeah. I, that's really how I like to do it. And then I will really, like, really fall back on outfield after I get like my first three. And, mm -hmm. um, and like really focus on filling that flex at infield and like dominating it. And, and mm -hmm. then I'll just like get whatever outfield I get later. Cause I like some of the later guys. So is this going to be one of my first Lindor shares or is this going to be me upping the Ellie exposure? Take Ellie. Fucking right. We're taking Ellie. Let's go. He's going to crush. He's going to crush. Josiah Gray on opening day, and everybody's going to wish they had more Ellie. Why were we not <laughs> taking this guy in the first round? Oh, you already know. You already know it's coming, man. It's absolutely coming. Uh, okay, I'll read uh, some of my guys because I was yeah. curious to do this. I have done 55 drafts thus far. Uh, five of them have were of – oh, four of them were of the perfect game variety and then i have about 22 i think slow drafts still going thus far um so my highest owned outfielders uh michael l trout uh christopher morell ton tyler o'neill and jordan alvarez uh, 32%, 26%, 24 and 22. That's kind of been my outfield stand thus far. Like um, infield, Isak Paredes, Jose Altuve, Ryan McMahon, Bo Bichette. Then Ryan McMahon is a stance, man. Yeah, I think he's more than oatmeal. People think he's kind of oatmeal-y. I think he's like kind of good. And his glove keeps him at third base all year long. And I'm just buying Coors, I think. No, I I, I like it. Like, yeah. I think we, we're, we're pretty quick to forget come dailies, right? Like, we're drafting Ryan McMahon in, like, a lot of the drafts when he plays yeah, third at Coors. Or, third or fourth round when he plays at Coors. Yes, and he does that, you know, the way it works. The way the, NFL, the, way the MLB, MLB season is laid out. He plays there half of the season. <laughs> Let me break that down. Uh so I think he's a pretty good click and I don't, I wish I had more. I wish mm -hmm. I, I wish I had more. Cause I'm just like thinking like I, I lose sight of the daily lens so often. And, and when I'm drafting best ball and uh, you know, it, it, we're, we're quick to remember like last season when Cruz before he got hurt in dailies, Cruz was like a, a, a second round pick. I'm like, yeah, he was a fringe first rounder on certain days. Yeah. I'm like, why, why was this guy so freely available in, in best mm -hmm. ball? And then, uh, and then he slid into home plate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sad days. Let's not, let's hope for Thank nothing you. of the sort this year. Thank you. Um, I like that. I like this start from, from track is uh kid Cuddy asking the L2 a, a, um, stack with with Alvarez and I think yes it's definitely a stack with Alvarez thing because I was taking Jordan anywhere from six to ten not every time but like you know mixing and matching so I would stack him in the fourth round when he came back but then I've also been doing what Trakis just did at that far side uh, I think I've ran pretty good on some of the Acuna stuff but I've done that one where in the fourth and fifth if Altuve falls I do the Bregman Altuve I like that. I like that a lot. Um, I get a ton of Jose Altuve, man. I've really upped that stance big time. Like I did like my first like 30 drafts or 20 drafts. Didn't have a lot mm -hmm. of Altuve. Um, I had like this, I had a, I had a bias on him and then I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, he just signed a big contract. He's not as old as I think. And he's hitting lead off and he yeah. played well last season better than I remembered. Um, so I'm like, I need to get more Jose Altuve because I think the Astros are going to be really dirty. And uh, yeah, was... so I stack him quite a bit too with Jordan. He was supposed to miss like the whole first half of the season, like Bryce Harper style. And then yeah, he ended he got, up coming, yeah, fucking hit. Yeah. Yeah. And then he ended up coming back like slightly before his timeline and did nothing but produce, but he did miss a little bit of time after that. Um, Nez, make this pick for me. Mm, we got no, a, yeah, no coal. Yeah, no. Uh, do you want to do Kirby or, or do you want to scroll for another infielder? Uh, you don't like Gold, Goldschmidt or Machado there? Not really, but you can do Machado. I know you like Machado. 
let's let's take Kirby then, and then right. maybe we'll stack Walker on the way back or something. Yeah, I like it. I am sort of pushing pitcher up a little bit, you know, with the Cole injury and the Gosman injury. Like, I want to get these healthy aces. Um, mm-hmm. So I think I think Kirby, pretty much all these guys that are not hurt right now, represent really good picks at pitching because mm-hmm. I mean, pitching gets thin. Infield gets thin really quickly. The field really adjusted, like in the middle of draft season, I feel like, where every outfield was getting like way too like pushed up. Um, mm-hmm. and then like and then we kind of really corrected that stance big time and in, in a way that I don't think was overcorrected, I think is correct. So infield gets really thin now. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. I mean, I didn't think about it through that lens, but that's a pretty sharp point. The way that I look at it, at least, mm-hmm. where like you know, I, yeah, it's nice to be done with outfield, like before round 16, but the infield players that you're left with are just like, like, yeah, the, the drop off is less. Mm-hmm. It's just not super appealing to me. I, I could do Walker with a stack here. Yeah. I don't do a ton of Carol. So doing Carol with Walker feels good. There's also like Marte and, and Suarez later. So if we want to do Machado or someone else. Yeah. Sue Walker. Okay, I don't do a ton of Machado, but I that that's just so, I've never I've never been a big Machado drafter. Fair enough. Yeah, I mean he's kind of he's kind of like one step up from oatmeal, where it's like you just kind of know what you're getting every single year, and it's like not as sexy to draft. Uh, who, who's not as sexy? I'm sorry, Machado. Like you just kind of know what to expect. Like you expect like a baseline of like 30 home runs. You expect them to hit like 265. You expect them to hit third every single day. Like it's just it's just not as fun to draft. Yeah. He doesn't run anymore. Yeah. Yeah, I, I th- there's times in dailies where he will go like undrafted in and- you know, on, on mm-hmm. reasonable size slates. Um, yeah. I mean, at least I remember that in the past, basically any good pitcher at home because that park's just so bad to hit it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Charles, I am trying to uh, max the dinger. Uh, I've got some slows going and a multi tabling at night. I'm doing whatever I can. Uh, Cause <laughs> I love it. I gotta, I gotta, you know, I, I think this dinger is going to fill before, uh, before the day that it locks. Yeah, I mean, it's trending that way, especially with the perfect game out of the way. I got to get my solo shot in for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely do that. I, I had a lot of fun doing that. That was uh, that was cool. There was a lot of names that I didn't recognize in there, so that was really helpful. <laughs> yeah, um, the, we're at 80% full, eight, almost 81% full. Um, of the dinger? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's go back to the my guys for one second here. Yeah, this one stings. Yuri Perez at thirty or at twenty percent. That one stings right now. Yeah, that's uh, that's unfortunate. But you got you got you know you got some volume to help bring that down a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was surprised that I had as much Garrett Cole as I did. I was like okay. at nine percent Garrett Cole when I got the bad news. Um, really shocked me. I didn't think I uh, I didn't think I was drafting him that much, but clearly I had a soft spot for him. So you know, praying that that's not. That's not so bad, but I might have ran good on that one. I have one share. Nice. And and I know my one share was a seventh round pick. Was it? Yeah. That wasn't on stream, right? No. No, we, we passed up on yeah, we, we we really passed up on some um some full value. Okay, here's my uh my my highest owned starters right now. 24%, 24%, 22%, 22, 22%. These are my top five. Uh, Hunter Green, Bryce Miller, Nathan Avaldi, Carlos Rodon, and Brandon Fought. The Rodon one I am warming up to a lot because that he's, you know, another pitcher that is healthy <laughs> and has upside. Yeah. Um he he's definitely a mystery box, but I think the range of outcomes are probably cozier than ADP suggests. I tend to agree. Yeah. Uh, my my highest pitcher is Grayson, for sure. Like, I know I was kind of naming off some recent my guys, but Grayson, 37% for me. Uh, still going strong there. Mitch Keller, 
just behind him. And then there's, there's Kyle Harrison. And then uh, Joe Musgrove up there too. Been uh, hammering away at him, just staying the course, ignoring the bad spring. And no one will be surprised to know that I have a bunch of Paul Skeens as well, but I need, <laughs> I need to actually take out the, um, I have the bunt in there and I did an, uh, I auto drafted the bunt. So mm-hmm. let's, um let's get that out of there and see what it actually is. Oh, it barely moved. So I guess I am just <laughs> all the way in on, on Skeens. Uh, we got Garrett Cole to come back to us in the seventh here. Is it too soon still? Uh, Cattell Marte is a nice stack. I would say uh, Marte first. Yeah, I think so too. I agree. If he comes back, you know, if you want to do that, I think it. that's probably fine. But I don't let's, think these guys are going to take him. Let's play, uh, let's play a little Garrett Cole game right now with just like pitchers in general. Okay. Garrett Cole or Grayson? Grayson. Garrett Cole or Cole Reagans? Oh, Reagans. Uh, Blake Snell still homeless or Garrett Cole? Snell. Everybody on the board over Garrett Cole. Okay. Ah, oh, there he goes. Um, Bobby Bobby Miller or Garrett Cole? Hmm. Probably Bobby Miller. Okay. Rodon Keller. Keller. Uh, maybe Cole over Rodon, maybe. Okay. So like SP 30 ish territory. We're Mm -hmm. back up on the clock here. Uh, a big range of guys. I don't normally take, we could probably use a pitcher because it does kind of fall off in my opinion after the Joe Ryan, Zach Eflin tier. Yeah. What do you Um, think? Joe Ryan or steel? I got like Joe Ryan. I like Ryan. Yeah. I like the addition of the sweeper last year and yeah, I just think better park. Um, Probably better team, question mark. They're probably comparable teams, but easier division for sure. Have you seen the uh, the blurb on uh, Jackson Cheerio? No. What's the blurb on Jackson Cheerio? He's in the mix to make the roster. Oh, no. Boy, I tell you what. I, 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 don't, I don't think I'd have enough energy for the victory lap if, uh, if Cheerio doesn't crack opening day. Um, yeah, I, um, I don't have much. I won't, I won't, I wouldn't victory lap because we want to see young, exciting stars in the league, but Mm -hmm. it would certainly bode well for the lack of Cheerio shares that I have, which, uh, I'm at 9%. So like you guys won, I'm at the market, right? Like I'm not (laughs) like, I'm just not going haywire over, uh, over Cheerio. Okay. Let's see my 55 teams here. How do I spell? Jackson Cheerio. I have one share. Nice. Ah, yeah. I mean, who knows? He's he's a stud, and he's a he's a sick young talent. But I don't know, twenty year old in that park, right handed. I just I think there's better spots. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, I don't know. We'll have to see what happens and, and who gets more playing time because obviously it looks like Cheerio's gonna get more playing time than this other play like Jack uh, Junior Caminero. I am just mm-hmm. like, as far as this season goes. Um, on like a rates basis, points per plate appearance basis, like much more excited about Cam and Arrow than 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 Cheerio. And they play different positions, so that does matter. Um, it's Rays a huge, are, huge oh, comparable discount. Uh, in, insanely so. Cam and Arrow doesn't get drafted all the time, so mm-hmm. makes makes for a good pick. Uh, Rays had said he went with a four Ranger stack, and I've done this quite a bit. Okay, let's see. He went with, um, oh, not the conventional. Normally when you think four Ranger, you start with Simeon and then Seager in the third. He's got an Adolis Simeon and then double tap the outfielders with uh, Evan Carter at ADP and then Wyatt Lankford. Didn't get taken by the Seager drafter, so he goes ahead and clicks him there. That's fun. Yeah, I like it. I do a lot of Ranger stacking. Uh, I don't know if that's obvious or not, but Man, that, that's pretty fucking obvious. Ness. <laughs> <laughs> do, uh, I, do you know how much Corey Seager I have? Uh, um, 23%. Mm, you're close. 27. Nice. I feel yeah, really I good mean, about that one. You're yeah. You're a full fledged Seager guy. That's just fun. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm the only, I'm the only donkey in discord 
hammering Adolis Garcia, our boy, no bow socks. We are on opposite ends of that spectrum. He has zero, zero Adolis Garcia, and he drafts a lot. He's, he's, he's definitely not a uh, small sample size guy. And I am at 21% Adolis Garcia. That's interesting. Uh, I venture to guess I have zero as well. And I think it's because of my stand on my trout. Yeah, I think that's part of it too, is he has a lot of trout. Yeah. Uh, Turn Me Up has 182 drafts and he has zero as well, he just said. It's like you guys didn't even watch the postseason, I swear. Unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, he was electric in the postseason. He was so fun. Dude, he's automatic. Um, he was automatic. We kind of hit on this Garrett Cole one. Um you think there'll be a Nick's asking, do you think there'll be a smaller MLB contest before the season starts? My cousin was asking me this the other day too, just because of the bankroll. I think it'll be fully dependent on the dinger filling. I venture to guess no though. And that might just be like bro science. Maybe they do like a three or five dollar, like 5k entry one if we fill the dinger like nice and early. But I think that what they would probably do is a bigger opening day one. That's what I would think. I agree with you. Um, I, we, we still have 20%. Like we're close to filling, but there is still 20%. We're 10 mm -hmm. days out. Um, I, I don't think that we're going to get another best ball contest. If there is, I probably like, like being candid, I probably won't play it because I've got quite a bit going on elsewhere. Um, and I think that they will kind of opt for a bigger daily. Um, all right. We are on the clock. I, you, I see Mitch Keller. I draft Mitch Keller. But if you want to do anybody else like Xander, um, we can. Um, no, I, I'm not in love. I like doing the Xander stuff when we stack Xander. I don't love doing him on his lonesome and there's not really any great back stacks for San Diego unless you do like Cronenworth in the last round. So I, I, let's go ahead and take Keller there. I probably would have taken Bobby Miller if I was just on my lonesome, but those two are kind of same tier for me and interchangeable. So yeah, I don't have a lot of Bobby Miller because he goes right by Mitch Keller. So that's Fair uh, enough. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a little upsetting because I think Bobby Miller has some serious stuff, mm. um, but unfortunately, I am a flawed man, and uh, <laughs> I like I like my home team. Um, let's talk about some of the other news over the weekend. There, Nez, we had Josh Lowe recovering from a hip injury, and now he has sprained an oblique. He was going kind of like higher on this site or on our site than anywhere else in the industry because of the outfield designation. There is some like fear that he could have been like a platoon guy, but I low key liked him, especially as like a 2020, like, you know, maybe like a 50 combined steals and homers potential guy this year. Um, this setback, how far are you sliding him down the rankings uh, and such? Does it open up anything else? Oh, oh fuck. Let's make the pick too. Okay. Um, Oh, Friedel's another one. Um, yep. Uh, we I would, would normally stack him with Ellie here, but I don't think it's enough of a discount when he's going to miss the beginning, like six to eight weeks. So Wrists I'm like hard. Hoskins, Green, or Musgrove. Uh, let's do – let's diversify the portfolio and do Musgrove because Green is my highest owned pitcher. Okay. Uh, yeah, dude, Josh Lowe, it's a bummer. Mm -hmm. I wish him a speedy recovery. I only have three percent, so I liked him early because I was taking so much of the Isak Paredes and so much of the Yandy because I thought they were both mispriced. So I was kind of just doing it with like the anchor of him and like no Luke Rayley mattered to me. And the fact that I don't think series like a hundred percent, um, you know, everyday player or they weren't ready for him to be an everyday player, I, I was kind of aping in a little bit, but um. Yeah, I, I, not not to the tune of anything too large. Mm -hmm. Who who uh, Noah's wondering about are the fades that you're worried about? Do you have any that come up top of your head? Uh, I would say a duelist. like that. That's one that's like um, a byproduct of a stance that I'm taking. Fade. Um, I would say Fe Freddie Freeman because I've been um, pretty lucky with like the front end of draft boards. Last year, that thus far this year, so I, you know, he's just a guy that could kill you. Yep. Um, uh, Yoshi, I don't have a, a bunch of Yamamoto. I kind of pass on that tier of pitcher, 
So the Strider, Burns, Yamamoto could kill me, uh, especially if they roll a two-start week in the finals because I've been doing a lot of that secondary tier of pitcher. Uh, those are the first ones that come to mind for me. How about you? The big one for me is uh, Kyle Schwarber. Okay. Yeah. Dude, I have Can like you take no a Kyle over? Schwarber. Do you take a Dolus over Schwarber? Is that what happens? Usually at the Schwarber range, um, I don't get a lot. I've been pretty fortunate as well in that in that at the turn where I don't have a lot of picks there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, I've been doing a Dolus over Schwarber. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, like it's it it's not my cup of tea necessarily, but I don't think it's bad. Yeah, there was um I think what really got me in on Adolis was like thinking about that lineup and how good I think it, it will be. And the improvements that he did make last year, I was like, I kind of think that there might be something there. Like increasing your walk rate four percent, like another year into the league, th- that's a pretty big deal for me. I mean, that, that's yeah. a huge jump. It could be variance, but it could also I, be the lineup around him becoming so much better and you know, like that matters right now. All of a sudden he, he doesn't have to be relying upon to be like the guy and he can be more selective. That's what I'm kind of, that's, that's how I'm thinking about it. Right. Like the eye is improved. He slugged better. Like he just got overall like a lot better and the team is really good. I, I, I don't know, man, that, that is like the most just donk pick that I'm making this season and I'm making it a lot is just like, I don't care about your projections. Adolis yeah. Garcia is massive and the team is nasty. I want Adolis Garcia. Like, you know what? Adolis is to you as me. Ellie is to me. Yeah. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, Let's see here. He'd be pissed with Sanga wins the Cy Young. Yeah, that one would hurt too because I do not have much Sanga at all. Copper won't tell us how much Sanga he has. How much do you think he has percentage wise? Thirty six percent. If he's autoing, he's laughing at you right now. Why you think it's like way more? It's like sixty. It's like seventy. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I know it's like in the seventies. <laughs> I applaud it. I think it's. I'm glad that he's in the baseball streets, getting a sweat in. Because uh, if Senga's early, he's gonna just crush. That is true. the The Seager stance goes hand in hand with the Adoli stance, which is why those percentages are both equally pretty high, uh, but mm. not a ton of Simeon though. Oddly, I, it got to kind well, of to I, choose. I, yeah. I think you kind of got to choose. And I think you basically, it was easier for Seager to come back when it was bearish news over and over again about him and Simeon never had that. So Simeon's always going on the left side of the board. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. a good point. I don't have a lot of one oh one. I'll tell you that much. My Acuna shares are not high, only 8%. So even with the field. Okay. Um, we got the TJ Friedel. Is it enough of a discount here? I don't uh, think so. Sh- okay. Shoda feels like a nice one to jump this tier. Shoda's my um, pick right now. If you scroll down a little bit more, it's Shoda or Vinny P. And I think I would maybe say Vinny P. Okay. Yeah, I'm warming up to Vinny P. I took him last night in my uh, home league. Just like young guy ceiling. Holy shit, Tucker's on one right now. Throw your Mr. Good Boys in the chat. He is, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> is, he, is he finished with the slipper? He's on to the next thing? Oh, no. Oh, He's going to town. <laughs> oh, buddy. Get, get that out of his mouth. <laughs> BRB. <laughs> Your dad's gonna <laughs> show us the slipper if it's de- if it's just destroyed. Show us the show us the damage. Must be fine. Oh, yeah. Must what? be okay. All right, we're back, Mister Good Boy. Going. <laughs> Are you? Were you hammering Wyatt Langford this this uh... draft season? No, 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 I don't think so. Okay. Um, I, I was trying to get him, but like I, I, I wasn't as bullish as everybody else was. I, I, I definitely was like mixing him in. 
Um, who do you like here? Um, King? Brown? I like King. I like Volpe a lot, man. Um, and, and okay, let's do it. For I'm what it's worth. Time. Oh, hell. Wow, that was quick. Holy shit. Yeah, I don't, I don't have I don't have my I don't have my home court internet where it normally you don't gives got you the home cooking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the buffer in there to give you that extra time. Uh, <laughs> I mean, for what it's worth, DJ LeMahieu has like a pretty significant foot injury, so I don't mm-hmm. know how that's really going to affect Volpe. But it looked like DJ was threatening to lead off, and now with that out of the out of here, um, you know, Volpe could could you know take that leadoff spot, which I mean, is it good or bad to hit in front of Juan Soto and Aaron judge? <laughs> it seems, it seems like a good idea. It seems <laughs> decent. <laughs> yeah. So like, like I said, man, I've been hammering infield and like really like trying to bear in mind that like treat the flex as a fourth infielder. And with that in mind, like I'm, I'm really piling in the draft capital into the green position and I hope that it works. Okay. Yeah. I think I do it in the reverse way of you where it's like, I pile into it, but I pile into it with seven of them with guys. I like late that I'm getting condensed around. Gotcha. Yeah. That, that, that is like the, the, you know, the, the, the push and pull of it is mm-hmm. how you, how you choose to fill it. And I know in the past, the data has definitely said, you know, infield doesn't fall off as hard so you can do what you're saying um mm-hmm. yeah um no both socks saying that uh coming back x-rays came back clean but bone bruise <laughs> it, it's a pretty significant bone bruise i'm pretty sure okay. uh there you go yeah it's a pretty significant uh it's uncertain for for opening day um bone bruises are interesting i'm i'm thankful every day that i've never uh suffered one because they seem like they hurt like hell Oh yeah. You okay, there. Sanga goes one forty four. Oh yeah, pucks. <laughs> <laughs> pucks hurt, man. Um, <laughs> let's 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 go back to the spring stuff for a second. We talked about the O'Neill Cruz one off mm-hmm. the top there. Um, any worries about Aaron Judge right now? He's kind of like hitting off a tee, soft toss, that sort of stuff. Um, are we just treating him business as usual and taking him in that three, four range, or have you firmly moved uh, the Dodgers guys over him? So here's my answer is that I'm taking him three. Yep. But I'm worried. I'm worried about it, but the ultimate, like the, the thing, the thing that I don't care about is that like, I think that he can play five to six games in, in when it matters the most in, in, in each of those weeks, and that's really all I care about is like that he still has like the highest ceiling, one of the highest ceilings in in our game. And I'm doing it, but I'm scared. Uh, yeah. I am scared because this guy is this guy. It's not like this is like a rare thing where he's dealing with an injury. This guy's dealt with injuries quite a bit. Mm-hmm. So I don't love it. But what I'm doing is putting on a brave face and just loading up at um, it, with my Aaron Judge positions. And currently biggest- I'm at uh 14% Aaron Judge. Okay. Yeah, I'd expect you to be a little bit higher than that, but maybe that's just because of the draft window because now if you take him at like 3, he's obtainable to get like over the field in the same way that getting over the field on AD is obtainable uh yeah. in today's slate. Yep, cuz Shohei yeah. goes and so and a lot of times Mookie goes over him as well. Right. Yeah. Man, is Erie just like undraftable now like Elbow imaging is just so effing scary. It's it's tough to take a you know to take Yuri right now. Yeah. Um, are the ceilings of Alex Verdugo and Anthony Volpe negatively correlated because we both want them to lead off? I don't think so because they play yeah. different positions, so they'll be in the lineup together. I think that that's that's not something that I would care about. Yeah, fair enough. Um, what are your thoughts here on taking Verdugo or taking Stanton to stack with Volpe? I, I'm like, I kind of, I, I take Verdugo, but you know, I, I, I like my oatmeal. Okay. And, he, and he's like light oatmeal. Okay. You know, it's not even like you, the best, but do you like him better than MJ Melendez to stack with Vinny P? Yeah. I, I don't really take MJ Melendez. I think, um, I, I got over that, the MJ Melendez, uh, 
fandom that I had for quite a while. I had so much of him last season. Mm-hmm. Not you so take certain, any. He's great. Do Do you take any of um uh um Garcia or uh, Salvi Perez in the last round to stack with your Bobby Witt or your Vinny P? Mm-mm. I it, it's a, it's it's pretty much Bobby Witt, Vinny P, and that's really it for, okay. for me. Yeah, that's fair. Some 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 notes that Garcia might um, lead off or whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I have seen that. I, I think it's fine if you want to do that, but that's not typically how I have playing in field. Yeah, I haven't done it yet. Uh, Gavin Williams got some good news. He's going to open the year on the IL, but like it's not as bad as we saw before. Uh, Erie Perez or Gavin Williams as of right now? Gavin, knowing that yeah. it's it's somewhat good news. I didn't even see what the latest update was on him, but that's pretty good because I, um, I was at 9% I'll, Gavin Williams. I'll read the tweet for you in a second. Um, Christian Encarnacion Strand stacks here if we want it. Uh, Melendez stacks previously mentioned. Jake Berger feels like you can just get his production from something else later. Um, Kerry Bonds, Isak Paredes, a pitcher. Yavoldi? Like- I, I, I kind of like this right. range of pitching. Okay, let's do it. Yeah, Evoldi, one of my highest owned. He just feels like the stable back end guy that when you build a staff without a true ace, like you build a staff with SP, you know, 12 as like your ace in quotations, he feels like a good backup horse. Does he not? Evoldi? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, like for like real life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really need them to sign Gumby. Uh, they, they keep playing the long game with him and uh, I'm worried that they're going to miss out. I, I really am not so certain that they're going to, Sign him, and that makes your boy. You called out Dane Dunning, and I was like, "No, man, I can't do the Dane Dunning stuff." It might be like a way a little bit more viable now, especially now that we're almost at contest close. Mm-hmm. Nobody takes him, and he's, he's probably going to be the number five starter. You know, even when everybody gets back. So I, I, you know, I thought about that more and more after you mentioned that, and uh, I think it's more vi- I think it's I think it's kind of viable. It just feels like a cheeky spot to get wins and quality starts. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. He he's not like he's not a crazy K ceiling guy, but like yeah. Yeah, he's he's a very he's a very decent number five starter. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow, this is kind of nuts that on redacted uh Aaron Judge goes at twelve sometimes. There's no rules over there, man. That place is lawless. (laughs) It is ins- it is it is crazy over there. Here we respect one another. We have our we have our stacking partners. We have <laughs> we're, we're we're sharp over here. Over there, it's like uh, what's there's some crazy shit over there. Uh, That's funny. yeah. Turn me up saying he's got forty four percent Gavin bags. It was at fifty two at one point in time. Holy that is a hell of a stand. Shit. I want yeah. I wonder what Turn me up thinks of the the Guardians just in general. Because I mean, if you're that bullish on Gavin Williams. Then you probably think that he's going to be good. I think mm-hmm. the Guardians are like a sneaky AL Central contender. If the rotation, uh, yeah, I mean, if the rotation, rotation yeah, it's because you got Tanner Bybee and you got um, uh, Bieber and and uh, Gavin McKenzie, like, yeah, and McKenzie, and Tristan McKenzie, yeah, that's that's pretty good against a bad division with like good home parks to pitch in. Mm-hmm. Like, well, like Chicago's kind of bad to pitch in in the middle of summer, but it's fine. And same with wind blowing out at Kansas City. But in a vacuum, they're they're going to score the least. They're going to have the least amount of home runs in the league. They're going to score probably near the bottom in total runs. So as long as they play good defense and pitch well, they 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 could shock some people. Yeah, I uh, they got a decent. I mean, they have obviously. Joe Ram, Jose Ramirez, yeah. my boy Naylor, yeah, his brother Bo, who can who can rake, um, two good Canadian boys. Uh huh. Jimenez, which is like whatever in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, let, let me just roster resources instead of trying to name the Guardians off the top of my head. Remember when Oscar Gonzalez was a thing last year? Oh, buddy. Numi loved the SpongeBob walk up music. SpongeBob. (laughs) (laughs) Oh man, 
I mean, Quan, hello. I'm forgetting about. Yeah, Quan. Love Quan. Um, and then like Kyle Manzardo is going to be up at some point, but that's yeah, like kind of an show. odd one because it's yeah. like, where is he going to play? Oh, they'll find a spot for him if they're contending. It doesn't matter. Yeah, just DH him and make Naylor play first, I guess. Exactly. Like 100%. Yeah, they're, they're, I can talk myself into them being above 500 for sure. Yeah. They, yeah, it's a, they turn me up, just said it in the chat there. It's an ultimate oatmeal, but there's value in oatmeal. There is. Yeah. Um, We're going to be back up here in a second as we get, we can start scrolling around here. I might do the Gavin Williams thing here because I do not have a ton of him, and the fact that people are on him that I and I am not is uh, is scaring me a little bit. Yeah, I need to let me do a little quick uh, Twitter search for Gavin Williams just to um, just to see. Oh I, yeah, I had the note pulled up to the side here. I had um, we'll start the year on the injured list. He'll need another three or four days without throwing before he ramps back up. He won't have enough time to build up completely before opening day, but had an MRI and everything looks okay structurally. Hmm. Okay. That's well, I'm glad bullish. that there's. Yeah, I'm glad that there's no injury there. I would still probably uh, take your boy Bryce Miller, but okay. I know. Yeah, I, I mean, it depends on what you want to do with your portfolio here. Well, we got my, one of my highest owned in Evaldi here. We passed on one of my least highest owned in Hunter Green to take Mitch Keller instead. We can go back to playing the hits. We've diversified a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, so this uh, I, is a six pitcher. You probably stop at seven with this staff. This is a pretty solid staff. <clears throat> Sorry. Um. Yes, I. I think so. Yeah. I. Yeah. I almost. I. I've been doing seven, seven, six, almost not exclusively, but that's been my kind of my happy zone, my comfort zone right now. Yeah, I. I just think it makes. Uh. I. I think it makes sense. Uh, big ass Ryan suggesting that he has seventy one percent on Will Benson. Obviously the the. TJ news is good for Benson's ability to potentially push up in the order. Um, I was not, you know, jumping up and down hand over fist to, to get Benson. I've been definitely taking him a guy that I started mixing in before the Friedel injury. And now I think is a pretty good sneaky 19 20th round pick is my boy, Jake Fraley, man. I think Jake Fraley, we saw it last year with TJ Friedel out that against righties, they just, they just one for one replaced him and let off with Fraley. I'm with you. I'm with yeah. you. I thought Fraley was perfectly cromulent. I mean, yeah. just no other way to put it. I thought Fraley got the job done. Doesn't strike out a lot. Walks above average. Hits for decent power. Plays in a good park. And like we were just like way off him. Look, and I get it. There's a lot of bodies there. Um, uh -huh. and, and he's been like relatively undrafted. I think he is a pretty decent 20th rounder, just given the fact that he's really unowned in the contest well we just talked about that situation being a log jam and it's just cleared itself up with the noel v suspension and um fatal injury yeah and the fatal injury yeah uh should we shut it down at pitcher here and just take gavin williams and just be like this is a rock solid seven starter staff i think yeah i think you can take gavin here and hide his injury for the beginning of the season pretty well let's do it yeah i, I kind of wanted to get some there because i haven't got a ton and I think we can do some scroll the F down for the last four picks here um, to make ourselves a seven, seven, six that includes some unique players. And I think we just showed our hand on one of them. Potentially. <laughs> Potentially. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. Like I wasn't ready to crown. Like we, we talked about like Will Benson being like best friends with Hunter Green and he came on really well at the end of last year and he's got like 2020 upside in terms of like power and steel. But I wasn't ready to just like give him that like everyday job. I thought there was definitely going to be some pushback from a platoon side, like strong side platoon standpoint that Fraley could take at bats from both him and or Steer and most likely to be Benson than Steer in my opinion. Agreed with that. Benson's is still a pretty pretty sneaky pick there. He kind of came on late mm -hmm. into the into the ADP landscape. Um, projected to be a number eight hitter 
against righties, um, but Fraley is slotted in at cleanup. Right. According to roster resource. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was kind of about it before the injury, and now it makes it like kind of like, why not now? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's scary though. I mean, he was he was a part time role player like his whole career with Mariners, with Milwaukee, with whatever, and then last year he kind of jumped on the scene largely due to a Friedel injury, and then yeah, yeah, the the, the you don't like a wrist fracture. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> hot take. Yeah. I, I don't like when my guys enter their fracture their wrists. Well, just look at Fernando Tatis Jr. Like he was, you know, he's one of the best players in baseball and he gets yeah. the wrist injury. And like they talk about the wrist and the handmade bone injury as like the biggest power zappers, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's not good. It's not good. Mm-hmm. Um, what else do we have? There was a note somewhere I saw on Lodolo. They were all on my other computer, and then I moved here. Um, there was a note on Gavin Stone potentially being the fifth Dodgers rotation, just muddying the waters even further there. Um, Alex Cobb's back pitching on the backfields already. We were scared of him in general, but he's pitching well apparently. And He's still yeah. a giant? Yeah, good park. Maybe better team than we anticipate now that they've made some additions. Um, man, how about that? Alex Cobb. I mean, three straight seasons of a sub four ERA. Yeah. I mean, that's not easy to do in this modern baseball era where the standard ERA is around that four, five, four, four. Yeah. Mark, that's right? over 300 innings included with that. Yeah. Look at our boy Randy on Turkey day in Dallas. Amazing name. Yeah. Looks like, uh, you just looking at my exposures and, Giving himself a Henry <laughs> Davis and a little Edward Julian. Henry Davis in the in the sixteenth and Julian in the in the seventeenth. You love to see it. Big ass Ryan in the chat with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed him earlier there. He's talking about India might play some outfield. I hadn't heard that one yet. India, I just always thought of as as second base or third base. Like I know, they like they don't like Jonathan India. I don't know why. Like he was rookie of the year. He's a, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's a good baseball player, but I don't know. Steer played a lot of outfield last year. That was steer is the easy answer that steer plays left field. Yeah. But the problem is nobody's glove in center field can probably match. Will Benson's that's, that's the bull case for Benson over Fraley and Friedel is yep. that like he could play the best defensive center field. Yeah, and that'll uh, that'll play, especially when the bat doesn't. You know, the bat's mm-hmm. good too, so that'll that'll play big time. Um, Nez, we're only almost on the clock here. We could do the Benson stack with Ellie. We could save it to do with Fraley. We could do both. Um, we could do. I don't do a ton of Chapman. Uh, we're getting a huge Kelnick discount after the Adam Duvall signing. Yeah. Should we just take the discount? Um, is it too soon to write him off? What do you think here? I don't know. I think Kellenic might be like fancy, uh, fancy Jock Jock Peterson. That's a good show. And Jock Peterson stacks, but it gives us four guys. What do you think, Benson or 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 Jock? I think I, I think Benson. Okay. The, the runaway do really does seem cleared for for him right now. Let's do Benson and Fraley on this team. Why not? Yeah, it feels good. And then we can do um, two infielders to close. I think I want one of them to be Sal Perez. Sal Perez having a nice spring. Sal Perez going to hit behind or in front of uh, Vinny P every single day. I just yeah. that forty eight home run season lives rent free in my head. He's gonna play a lot, man. The the one thing that is good about the Royals is like good or bad, they're gonna play to win. They make they've made a lot of signings that show. I mean, they people forget they signed Michael Waka as well as Seth Lugo. Um, mm-hmm. They 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 play to win, and that's that means something when you're trying to <coughs> get plate appearances for. Um, mm-hmm you know, in, in fantasy. So I like, I like the press call, man. He goes undrafted. Yeah. I, I kind of think he's like, he's a little sneaky there. 
Um, can you tell me where did Michael A. Taylor sign? I saw him sign over the weekend, and now oh, yeah? I'm just it's totally blanking on me. He's uh he found himself in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, located in uh in the Pittsburgh Pirates Clubhouse. Oh, he is okay, okay. That's where <laughs> I was thinking about like jobs that he could take away from guys because he's so good defensively. Yeah, he's um I think that's a thorn in uh Jack Sawinski's side. Yeah, a little platoonage there. Big time. Mm. Big time. Yeah, I think they are they're leaning into it because dude, he crushes lefties. Yeah, I mean those daily contests, we know that in a big way. Yeah. Have you ever taken Hunter Renfro? He's another no. guy that kind of fits that. Let's scroll. Yeah, let's take Drake Fraley. Okay. I mean, like, Fraley had basically, like, part-time duties last year and still had, like, 800, 900 fantasy points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, he could be there. Yeah, I mean, he's thankfully, he's a lefty, so gets that advantage. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Renfro from Milwaukee in 22, he had a 492 slug. The year before that yeah. in Boston, where he was hitting in Boston, obviously, uh, 500 slug. And then last yeah. season, 416, just really, uh, really Damn, down bro. season. But yeah, everybody's expecting him to have a better season than last season. But spring okay. hasn't been overly kind to him, but it is spring and who cares? Yeah, for a guy like that, I'm less concerned. But, you know, you do want to see a little bit of it after a down year. Yeah, yeah, you would you would like to for sure. Uh, but he's probably got a lot of playing time coming his way in Kansas City. Yeah, I'm trying to think who else like would play. Yeah, I mean it's going to be him and uh, Nelson Velasquez are going to get like the the lion's share. I mean Drew Waters could maybe take some away, but yeah, yeah, they're interesting over there. Yeah, they're kind of like um, they're a little bit giants e. For the AL Central. Okay. You know? Not necessarily like platoony, but like they have guys that I'd like to be interested in, but like I just can't get excited about. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. I like the Giants more, uh, maybe obviously, but yeah. Um, no, I, I think that that's, um, that's a fair point. Yeah, be sort of saying that, you know, a couple years away for the next several years. Yeah. They do kind of feel like that team. We're seeing some interesting picks here. We are seeing uh, a Brandon Marsh pick. We did that one once um, before. Uh, another one that we were a spring riser who's been smacking the ball away. Um, Zach Geloff was was up there. I just thought of it because I saw Brent Rooker as well. Yeah. We see Jose Siri going there. Um, which the Giloff, you know, he I got a strong fate on Geloff. Uh, yeah. I am a little worried about that. I'm a little worried about that. Because I think him, Rooker, and Noda, and Ruiz are like, I can squint and see a fun little team there. Right. Uh, Lineup, that is. Yeah. Another one I was thinking about the other day just made me think of, because the A's stuff, is any love for Ramon Laureano bounce back after he had the PED stuff? Now he's in a better lineup with Cleveland. Any love there? Maybe not for our game. but Yeah. In real life, I think that he's he's a pretty awesome fit there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Noah was asking earlier about some of our scroll the F downs that we like in these late rounds. We're starting to see some of them here. I've done a little bit of that Jose Siri one just because he swings out of his shoes and hits home runs. So the dude yeah. that can get hot that back stacks with my Isak Paredes exposure. Uh, another one there, Jorge Polanco. I mean, there's no reason he can't hit third every single day for the Mariners. Um, obviously not a great park to hit in, but – you know, being left-handed and producing, you know, it, it was it was pretty easy to pitch the Mariners last year when you have high strikeout rate left or right-handers over and over again, you know, because it was just um, Tay Oscar and Eugenio Suarez back-to-back. And now it's like, give me France Polanco instead and, and, and mix in Raleigh there. And it's just a little bit harder to pitch to, I think. So mm-hmm. that's one back stack that I've been going to when I need to double tap infield late is two Seattle guys like that. Um, I, yeah, I, here's like, I like Hanniger. 
I like taking yeah. Heidegger. He goes on draft, and I think he's going to play a lot. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, Raphael is getting steamed a little bit here. He almost has a stranglehold on that center field job. Now we talked about it a little bit last show. Full I, I said it in the yeah, I said it in the Discord that he went from being one of the worst picks on the board to now he's one of the better 20th rounders and nobody cares now, but you know, I, when I first saw his name in the bullpen drafts, I was like, dude, I am not ready for baseball season. Like who is this guy? <laughs> now yeah, I'm yeah, fully yeah. entrenched and I'm like, okay, now we're, we're back and I can sort of see it with him now. Um, I think I got a pick here Nez for the next two. I, I don't know how you're going to feel about it though. What is oh. it? Hold on, sorry. I was gonna call. I was just trying not to cough in the microphone. I still have got this stupid thing. Um, I I, I want to take two catchers. I want to do the Perez thing, and I want to do the JT Realmuto stack with Kyle Schwarber. You're crazy, but I I, I like. Okay, you, which one do you crazy. want? Which one do you want? I like Perez, man. I think I I, I like oh, no. Sal Perez. Oh no! no! We don't have the oh. super fast internet. They're the super slow. Oh, oh I, I made you think that's on me. I'll, I'll own that one. I'll own that one. Oh, the team's dead. Our team is dead, Ness. Well, you know what you need to do now? Okay, Our boy now turned gotta... me up, gave, gave us a nice shout. We need okay. we need some more plate appearances now. Okay. Nolan Shanwell is batting ah. second for the Angels. Yeah. I don't want to take him on stack. I'd rather take somebody who's going to do similar, but with a stacking partner. Well, you've got a lot of trout on other teams, so it kind of counts. <laughs> stacking yeah. across the universe, man. It's a thing. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I, I think it's a good shout in general. I'd rather do it on some other teams. Okay. What about doing India and, and going four reds here? Is that insane? No, Brendan Brendan Rogers with uh, Nolan Jones. Uh, Montero is not going to play enough for us now. India, I, I, yeah, let's just like lean into the red stuff now. Yeah, I mean, we know what 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 Great American Small Park can do. Yeah. All right. Oh, that was. That was de- that was devastating to end up with an eight pitcher build there when I'm infield so sorry. was a little thin. No, 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 we're good. Normally, I'm, f- I'm normally I'm quicker than that. I struggled there. Yeah, the, I, 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 I would be really shocked if Bradish pitches, but uh, yeah, me too. Uh, who was it that didn't um, Nola have something like this once? I mean, he's like a, he's the outlier. You know, the... mm-hmm. yeah. See, Billy gets it. Stacking across the universe. That's gonna be the yeah. I blame the cough. I blame the cough too. Yeah, I, I think the stacking across the universe is gonna be the next level of combinatorial ownership, but for a portfolio. Seriously, like it. Dude, it, it all works like, the same. You know, it's game, just like. The game tree correlation matrix that goes like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, might be yeah. that might be a, a shark jumping moment, but I I condone it. I give it <laughs> a stamp of approval. Next year's meta. We got scroll the f down summer coming up here. Um, link in the bio to the merch store with some of the stuff that Pete created. It's awesome. Uh, mine's already on the way. Yep. But uh, you know that that's going to be the next meta. This is scroll the F down summer. Next summer is going to be like correlation matrix of portfolios stacking across the universe. God, I love it so much. <laughs> um, Noah's asking this one. I, I really wanted to get to this one too. I've been doing some Sean Murphy late because Sean Murphy, in my estimation stacks a little bit better than like Orlando Arcia probably won't play as much, but just a better hitter and stacks a little bit better because of um, uh, just where he'll hit in the order is, is kind of like my bro science right now, but I could see myself doing a little cheeky Adam Duvall because I love me a lefty killer uh, who hits tanks late. Uh, He might only get 
480 plate appearances this year or at bats rather, but I don't know. I think Arcia is, is, is like actually like a pretty nice little sneaky pick there. So I like that shout. I have done an, an Orlando Arcia share. I've okay. done that in, in, in a draft. Uh, it, it's pretty sneaky. Um, if I give you 630 plate appearances for Orlando Arcia, or I gave you 500 for Adam Duvall, who would you prefer? Arcia. Okay. I think. Yep. In which case we should probably be layering in a little Arcia. The positional designation helps a little bit in terms of Duvall, but yeah. No, for sure. Yeah. All right, Nez, let's send this one into the stratosphere. Ignore the Kyle Bradish pick. Yes. That was so, so sad. But we finished with an 8-6-6. Kirby, Ryan, Keller, Musgrove, Avaldi, Bryce Miller, Gavin Williams, Kyle Bradish. Oh, <laughs> makes me sad-ish. Uh, <laughs> Ellie De La Cruz. Uh, Christian Walker, Cattell Marte, Vinny P, Anthony Volpe, Jonathan India, my first Jonathan India share. Um, Corbin Carroll, Schwarber, Nolan Jones, Verdugo, Benson, Fraley as the new 20th uh, rounder tack on that people should be considering with Friedel to miss the first two months of the season. What do you think, Nez? That, if it wasn't for that damn Bradish pick, man. Oh, I know, that hurts. Fuck. <laughs> but – if the stars align for the Reds, uh, this this team this team is really really fun. Uh, it you're going to be super unique, and that could that could really vault you in in the playoffs if you if you if you make it there. Yeah, playoff schedule. I was looking at earlier today. Great American Small Park has eight games, I think, in the first week and a half at home. And then the Reds are actually on the road for one series, but it wasn't like a bad park. I don't have it pulled up in front of me. I had it pulled up on the other computer, but I was looking this morning that they look like they low key look like a good team to be stacking uh, just because of the playoff schedule. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting a little bit more there. It's tough for mm-hmm. me, but I am doing it. All right. Um, best of luck to everybody playing in the hoop streets tonight. Uh, appreciate everybody battling through a little bit of, uh, technical difficulties at the start of this one. Uh, we'll be back, uh, this week's schedule. Uh, I'm going away for a bachelor party this weekend. So Friday's show will be moved to Thursday. So we will be doing Monday, tomorrow's paywall Wednesday with Pete. Uh, Thursday will be back with us and then Nez optional Friday for the paywall members. But Nez just keeps delivering. He did a Saturday show this week. It's insane. So we'll do something tomorrow uh, for sure. And we'll have something basically every day this week. We got you guys covered. Good luck in the hoop streets, like John said. And uh, yeah, just stay, stay glued to that news because it's going to mm-hmm. shake some shit up. <laughs> Um, maybe next dinger, uh, will probably be Thursday, something like that. Maybe we do the, not our guys one and we yeah. create, yeah, that'll be fun. That'll be, that'll be really interesting because <laughs> man, there's a lot of my, there's a lot of not my guys. So that'll be, it'll be fun to see what this team looks like. Love it, man. All right. Uh, did we get any news just before we close it out here? Uh, hoops related. Not that I we saw get- Okay, I'm just doing a quick scan here. It doesn't look like we got anybody ruled in or out. All right, cool. Uh, lots of contests still left to fill. Uh, go rewind to the beginning there and uh, draft alongside that hoops content. Uh, on behalf of Nez, myself, hit, do us a favor, hit that uh, like, that subscribe, that notification on your way out the door, and we'll be back tomorrow. Everybody's favorite time of the show, the end. Peace. Peace.